Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the video about testing in JavaScript. And in particular, I will be talking about the jest uh, mock function. So I hope you all you are familiar with the jest and the basic concepts of the testing. Uh, I hope you will learn something from this one. And if you did, then don't forget to leave the like and uh, Write something in the comment section if you have any questions or whatever. Uh, so, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look what I prepared for this one. So, in this one, I'm going to go ahead and talk about testing in uh, with Jest. And so, uh, basically, what the mock function is of what the mock what, what the what the mock function does in Jest is basically to replace something that we don't control with something that we have control over. So, for example, if we have uh, some code that is uh, calling an API and we are not, not sure what the result will be of this, uh, of this API call or we don't want to uh, just uh, slowing it down or making the connection uh, like waiting for us, uh, then we can implement uh, our own version of this function to always return the value that we want to return. Uh, so we can, for example, we can capture the calls to the function. If we if we make a fu mock function, uh, then we can track uh, all the calls that will be uh, basically fired to this function. And we can also return uh, the value that we, that we want. We can also change the, the implementation of this function. And basically, in Jest, we can do it in three ways. So the first way is to uh, write it as this way. So we can make a Jest uh, that fn method, and this will create for us a, a mock function which holds all the methods and uh, and the properties to track the function. The second one is to uh, write it with the jest that mock, and this will basically mock for us the whole module. So we can then uh, use the whole module as a version of the function that we want to test. Uh, and also we can also, uh, as the third option, we can use the jest that spy on which will spy on the function, which will, which is basically the same as the jest.fn, but we are not changing the implementation of the function, but we get the access to the all the methods and all the properties that the jest.fn method uh, is providing to us. So let's take a look at the small example that I prepared here. Let me just make it a bit bigger. So basically, uh, I have a small uh, folder. Uh, over here, I have a folder for a test. So I have a two test inside here. I have a source code uh, with two files, which I will explain you uh, in a bit. And I also have a utils uh, file that is uh, that is going to be uh, our function that we are going to check in our inside our test. And so inside the test. Uh, let's take a look first at our users. So here I prepared a small test uh, file. So on the very beginning, uh, and at the very beginning, I'm just uh, requiring the the code of the functions that I wanted to check. So the first uh, file is the users. So let's 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 take a look at these users. So inside of users, I basically just I'm requiring the axios. I'm just so here I'm just calling the axios. I'm creating a new class ob object uh, inside the class. I'm, I'm just uh, creating a get user method. And inside this method, I'm calling the get uh, getter. Uh, actually, I'm calling a get get call API uh, to to our user that JSON, but because I don't have user that JSON, I just wanted to, uh, I just want to implement this uh, access that method 
so that I know what I'm going to get back from this from this uh, methods. So you can see here that I'm just uh, requiring these two uh, files, uh, modules. And over here, I'm just uh, I'm mocking the whole module of Axios. So because I'm mocking this with jest.mock, I can then access or I can create an Axios that get and I can call on it the mock implementation once, which will uh, create a new mock uh, implementation. And so because of it, I can basically just, uh, what I can do is I can just return the function. And so I have the total control of what I'm going to receive back from this method. And so because on this line, I'm changing the, the get method of the Axios just for the testing purposes, I can then call our users uh, class and then the get users uh, method. And so what I will get back from this one is that uh, uh, I will get the response, uh, which is specified inside our, our uh, mock implementation. So when I'm calling on this line our users that get user method, I will then get a, a promise, and the promise will be the, the basically the object which I wrote here, right? So again. Uh, because I'm mocking the whole module of Axios, I can then access the mock implementation. You can also write the mock implementation uh, just, let me just uh, like this guy. And then I can also do it like this. And then I can, I'm just uh, mocking the getter for the whole uh, test uh, inside of this file. So if I would like to go to the terminal, never run npm just oh that's users if I run this guy then we can see that our test is yeah it's actually uh, confirmed it's actually uh, it passed so that's good so let's keep let's go back to the file so here uh, Again, on this line, I'm changing this implementation. So you can see here that I'm uh, I'm implementing this. So I'm mocking this implementation. And on this line, I'm changing this implementation to whatever I want to be uh, after it being called uh, once over here. So here I'm changing this method. And so I'm returning the... Uh, so basically, uh, I'm, re I'm rejecting the, the promise with the value of null. And so over here, I'm calling our users again. But because I changed the implementation of our mock function, then I'm expecting uh, something else from the from the users. So over here, I'm expecting the value to be null because I'm, I'm basically uh, uh, I'm rejecting the function or the promise with the value of null. So this way. I'm expecting it to be null, right? And over here, um, I'm creating a new mock, mock function with the jest.fn. So this will create for me a whole new function that is uh, uh, the instance of the mock function that holds all the properties. The same way that uh, that I did uh, at, the very, at the very top before our test. So I basically I mock it the whole module, and so over here I'm just creating a new function which will uh, resolve to the response the same way that it is happening over here. So after that, after I created the the mock function, I'm calling this function, and I'm expecting it to on the mock object. We can also console log the mock object to see all the properties that we can. Um, actually, actually, access on this object. So, if I, call, if I save this, you can see that I'm getting a, a, the, the constructor, the function, and so I can then access the mock uh, 
uh, which is the get them the setter uh, method. And if I, for example, I can call, let's say I wanted to call mock that calls. And so this will show me uh, with what properties this function was called. But because I didn't pass any, any, any properties uh, over here inside of this uh, function, I can also pass it pass there like x and, and y. Uh, and so, yes, yeah, so this is the way to to check the mock uh, function. And so, right, so. Here I'm basically uh, expecting the mock function, the calls to be a length of one. So because I'm just calling this once, right? So right now let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the, our test and check the stats. So this file or this test is similar to the to the previous one but uh, as you can see again um, I'm requiring the, the the files so I'm requiring the statistics from this file so all I do here is just uh, I'm creating a, a function uh, then of the instance of function then I'm basically uh, I'm calling our utils files, which is which is over here. So this is our utils file. So I'm just uh, creating a random number uh, for the daily stats and total stats, and I'm returning the both values. And so this is our utils for a file. So inside this function, I'm uh, I'm calling this file the utils. Then I'm just uh, calculating a percent of this two, and then I'm returning it. If the number is lower than the hundred, then I'm returning the result. And if the, num if the number is bigger than hundred, then I'm throwing a new error. And so over here, in the side of the test, uh, as you can see, I'm just uh, requiring these two files. Then I'm mocking the whole utils file which was which was over here right so I can so I can access to to all the methods inside of utils and then over here I'm creating a test which basically uh, just return the the valid uh, percentage number so if I would like to run the test on this guy Let's say, for example, this is, so this test is passing, and what I'm doing here is basically I'm creating a, a spy function. Uh, so this this one doesn't change the the implementation of the function, but I get all the I get access to to all the methods and all the properties that are available in the mock function, right? So the same way, I'm, I will just uh, create function with the just that I have fn, and then I'm uh, returning something, right? I can basically just create a function with the uh, mock function with the spy on, and I'm passing the the, the object, uh, which is basically the the module, and then the method that I want to spy on. And over here, I'm just creating two numbers, two values, which I'm going to use to return uh, inside of our mock implementation. So over here, I'm creating a new mock implementation, which will basically re return the daily stats, uh, which is the 10 and the total stats. And why I'm, why I'm doing this is because I want to be sure that each time I call this function, I will receive the same result, right? So over here, you can see that I'm calling this function spy spyfn. Then after that, I'm expecting this to be a number of ten. If I will just change it to a number of zero, I'll get an error because 
the receipt value is number 10. That's right? because I'm implementing uh, our functioning utils, which then calls, uh, let me just pull it out quick. So if I go to my, to my utils file, you can see over here that I'm just changing the implementation of this function over here. Uh, I'm returning the daily stats and total stats that I specified here. So I'm not longer, uh, uh, I would say, uh, I don't rely on these uh, random numbers that are over here, right? So because of that, I'm, sh I'm sure that I always I will always get the same result. So let me just go back to the file. So because of this, I am know that I know that I will always get the same number, the number of ten. So that's why I can just check the value to be number of ten. And over here, you can also see that I'm I'm just checking the results. So if I would like to console the the spy function, and I would like to check the mock object and the results, what you will see basically is that we get an, uh, an array with an object which is the return value and so the type right and return value number of them so this is those are the properties uh, I mean the the properties and the objects that you can access inside of the uh, of the mock, mock function that you're creating with jest so downline over here at the very end i'm just resetting the smog so that the other tests are not infected uh, with this uh, created with this smog that i created inside of this test uh, so uh, this this was a short video uh, that i hope you you could learn something from this one uh, if you did or if you have any questions then put them in the comment section and I will see you guys next time. Bye.